Hi, I'm Dr. Charlie Brown and this is Get Your Head in the Game. I'm here today at the North Carolina Dance Theater where the troupe has just finished a fantastic season and they're getting ready to go on tour. Now, whether you're a performing artist or an athlete, going on the road to different new locations can be exciting. It can be invigorating, but there can also be a lot of stress associated with it. Today we're going to talk about things that you can do to manage the challenges so that even when you're away from home and you're out in other situations, you can always keep your head in the game. Road trip sounds like fun, but not always. In this segment, we're going to talk about reducing stress and optimizing performance when you're traveling and on the road. Specifically, we're going to look at what makes travel stressful and identify things that you can do proactively to minimize stress. We'll then discuss tips for handling situations if you do start feeling stressed out. Let's begin by looking at what we know about stress. Stress is experienced any time that perceived demands are greater than perceived resources and outcome is important. So what makes travel stressful? When a performer or an athlete is traveling, the outcome is typically considered important and the person may perceive that performance demands are higher than at home. A person also typically does not have as many resources on the road as at home. There are two keys for managing stress on the road. First, look for ways to reduce demands. Now, if you're an elite performer, there are some demands that you cannot reduce, but make certain that you are dealing with the actual demands of the situation rather than personal expectations that create unnecessary pressure. And second, maximize your resources. Let's talk about specific strategies. One way to proactively focus on actual demands rather than perceived demands is to simplify and prioritize as you prepare to leave. Begin by making a list of all the things that you want to do prior to going on the road. Once you have the list, categorize each item as either need to do, not necessary to do now, not necessary until I return home, and mm, a waste of time. Focus your efforts on the need to do items. When making your list, don't just think it, ink it. Under stress, memory starts to fail. Write it down and you simplify your life where you don't have to worry about recalling it. One less demand, just look at your list. Now that we have a couple of ways to reduce demands, let's look at what you can do to maximize resources. When you travel, you typically do not have access to all the resources that you have at home. Start planning now to maximize your resources while away. This is a photograph of Greta Good Girl as a puppy with her bunny. We could take Greta anywhere, and if she had her bunny, she felt safe and secure. You may not have a bunny like Greta, but if you have a small item that helps you feel secure or connected with loved ones, take it with you. For example, I've known people to take a special scrapbook, a quilt, or a pillow when they traveled. Make plans in advance for regular contact with your support system. Video conferencing is a great way to stay in touch. And as soon as you arrive at your new location, find out where key resources are located. Find out where you can get food, medical services, physical therapy, a hot tub, anything that falls in the resources category. And finally, make certain that you stock up on essentials that help in times of stress. Make certain you have food, snacks, and liquids. If you have special nutritional needs, you may want to either bring food items with you or have them shipped to where you're staying. One of the most important things that you can do to manage stress while traveling is to make certain that you have plenty of recovery to balance the increased demands of travel and performing. 
identify three to five active recovery practices that you can do on a regular basis, even when on the road. These may be things like going for a walk, listening to music, stretching, or doing yoga. Be certain to identify times and places where you can have alone time when you want it. And above all, listen to your body and yourself and take breaks when you need them. Now, even with the best of plans, sometimes things may get rough. As a safeguard, plan now how you want to handle a crisis by writing out your personal crisis recovery plan. A good plan should be in writing and include three steps. First, write down three to five things that help you feel better when you're starting to feel stressed. Second, write down three to five things you want to remember that help you maintain perspective when you start to feel overwhelmed. And third, write down specific people that you can contact for support if you're starting to feel stressed out. Be certain to include their contact information so you don't have to be searching for it in the midst of a crisis. So let's recap what we've covered today. We've talked about the general nature of stress and how traveling can be particularly stressful because of our sense of increased demands while having fewer resources. We've covered a number of proactive steps that you can do to reduce demands and maximize resources. Simplify, use written lists, get your resources lined up, and make recovery a priority while on the road. Finally, we talked about taking the time to write out your own crisis recovery plan to serve as a guide in the event that you do start feeling stressed and overwhelmed. I hope you found something helpful in today's program. Remember, anytime we're talking about the principles of peak performance, those principles are universal, but you always have to tailor those principles to you, your strengths, and your unique situation. If you'd like additional information about today's topic or to learn more about educational offerings, contact our office at goodstuff at drcharliebrown.com. Thanks for watching today and remember, always keep your head in the game.